Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Root Beer Spritzed Spare Ribs. Well today we've got a really easy, really tasty recipe for you. Just a few ingredients and a few steps involved. We're gonna take our spare ribs, break them down into St. Louis cut, get them on the smoker with some barbecue rub, and then every once in a while we're gonna walk out here and spritz them with some root beer until they're tender and delicious, sticky good ribs. Well today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers Loaded Wichita, the stick burner. This is cereal number one. We're really lucky that we have the first ever Yoder sitting on our patio and every once in a while we get to fire it up. So the first thing we gotta do is get a fire going in the firebox. So we'll just start by getting some fire starter going here. You could always use paper, paper towels, whatever. Whatever you have handy. The Kamado Joe fire starters are really easy to use. We get our chimney in place and start with our charcoal bed. So this is our slab of spare ribs. Uh, down here on this portion are where the actual ribs are, and then up here are what we call the rib tips that have cartilage running through them. Uh, to pre prepare these St. Louis style, we separate them. They cook a little bit differently, so we'll keep the ribs on their own and the tips on their own as they cook. So typically what I do is I come in here and I take this little skirt off first, and none of this is gonna be waste. We can cook this for snacks, or you can in include it in your grind when you're making sausage. It's great for both. And then typically what I do is I come down to the end where the long bones are and I find the longest bone, which is usually like three or so bones in. And then I'll plunge my knife right down at the top of that bone and cut straight back. Then we'll flip it around and just make one long straight cut all the way down. So now we've got our tips and our ribs. And the tips, I'm not really going to clean them up at all. They've got a lot of cartilage running through them, but there's good meat to snack on there. So I'll just divide these up into a few pieces to smoke that way. And then what we want to do next is square up our ribs for that St. Louis style, that St. Louis cut. So I'll come in here to this last rib where you can see this was already poking out anyway. And we'll just square that off. We can do the same thing down here at this end. And we're not doing these like for a competition or anything. We're just doing them to eat. So often what I'll do is I'll kind of find the very last smallest bone, take that off, and we'll smoke this with the tips. But now we've got this great squared up spare rib St. Louis cut. Now here on the back side of these bones, we have this parchment, this sort of membrane that sits on top of those bones. It doesn't really hurt anything, but when you bite into that rib, it's never going to break down. You're just going to pull that paper off. So we're going to choose to do that now so that we can get some seasoning underneath there. So just work from a corner with a paper towel to get a hold of that little tab. Sometimes these come off all in one piece and sometimes you're going to work at it for a few minutes. Once you give it a grab though, hopefully we get a big old chunk to come off. And we had a cut here from the butcher, so that kind of interrupted that, but that's all right. We'll just work at it and get the rest of that peeled off of there. Now sometimes these uh, ribs already have this parchment peeled off and if you're wondering if yours is on there or not and you can't really tell what you can do is you can take your finger and just scratch at it and if you end up with some fat on your finger that means it's already gone if there's nothing there that means that membrane's still there like we see up here nothing on the finger now from here it's up to you how much more cleaning up you want to do you don't have to do anything else right here if you don't want to uh, you're going to find a little bit of fat on this side as well if you come across some silver skin, you can choose to take that off or leave it on. It's up to you. But this is about the most work we're gonna do all day, cleaning up these ribs. From here, they're ready to season, so I'm gonna knock out this other slab and we'll get them seasoned up. So let's prepare our root beer for the spritz. We're also gonna use this kind of as a binder. Uh, just go ahead and give the ribs a little layer of root beer to start. We're using the Fritz root beer from St. Louis, which makes sense because we're doing St. Louis cut ribs. So just a little layer to give that rub something to stick to. Before the rub, we're using Our Butts Are Smoking Ozark Heat. This is just one of my favorite barbecue rubs. So whatever 
delicious pork barbecue rub is one of your favorites. I know a lot of you guys like this one as well. We don't want to totally overpower the root beer flavor. That root beer is going to be subtle in the end, but we want to taste it, so we're not going to go crazy with rub. So same thing once again. Just hit the surface with some root beer. When we season from up high like this, tend to get some waste on the cutting board. But the good thing is it's not actually waste because what we can do once we're done here, we got a nice even spread, we we'll pick up the rest to put on the sides. There we go. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing we did to the ribs, to the tips. Uh, and then within a few minutes, you'll see on the surface of the ribs, the, the rub looks wet and that means it's attached to the meat and that's all you need, uh, all the longer you need to wait before you can put them on the grill. The charcoal's burnt down so we can lay that out for our coal bed. And start throwing some sticks on. And I like to use a combination of a hardwood and a fruit wood, so you get some great flavor, but some good BTUs as well. So we're gonna go with apple and hickory today. Now, at least initially, I'll go ahead and throw a couple cold logs on the fire. We'll wait for them to really combust before we close things up. But I also wanna put a stick at the front end of this box to warm up, so that when we're ready to roll this over, it's gonna catch on fire immediately and produce good smoke. So we're just gonna spread our ribs out. We'll do a couple on the bottom here and a couple on the top. Moves a little bit faster right next to the stack, so if I've got some big pieces, that's where I like to put them. Also, of course, going to be a little bit warmer down right by the fire, so if we need to, we'll keep an eye on things and we can always adjust or sort of rotate where everything's sitting. So we'll let these get a head start. We'll be back in just a little bit to start spritzing. Well, we're about 45 minutes into the cook now, guys. So we're going to go ahead and do our first application of root beer. Just kind of soak the surface. And close it back up. So we keep checking back every 45 minutes or so, uh, adding another layer of our spritz to the ribs. Let's talk just for a minute about what spritzing does to the surface of the ribs. Now a lot of times we don't spritz our ribs, um, and it's just a matter of preference and a matter of flavor and what you like and what you want to do. Um, I like a dry rib a lot of times. Obviously that's not conducive to trying to incorporate root beer into your ribs. So this is a really good way to do that. You can add that little bit of extra flavor, that root beer flavor on the surface throughout the cook, but while you're doing that, just keep in mind that it may take a little bit longer to cook your ribs when you're spritzing, because every time we spray some liquid on there, that liquid now has to kind of evaporate and it stops the cooking process a little bit, just a little bit, for just a little while to kind of prolong the entire cook. So going at a little bit higher temperature, we're caramelizing some of those sugars that are coming out of the root beer, and we're shortening the cook time. Looking good. Well, we're a couple hours in now uh, because we run in a hot fire, a little bit hotter fire today. We're definitely getting more color on the right side over here. So we're just going to do a little rotation, make sure everything colors evenly. That is some good looking color on those ribs though. We'll go ahead and rotate these top to bottom as well. Give everything another spritz. We'll close up the lid and let them keep cooking. Also going to go ahead and roll over another log. This is some of that apple that's been preheating in there. Throw another stick in there to warm up. 
Uh, for what it's worth right now, we're pretty much controlling the heat in the chamber by controlling the size of the fire. Uh, our airflow is pretty wide open. We've got the butterfly open. We've got the stack open. Uh, and that's because we're cooking a little hotter today. So we're cooking in that 300 range, we want the air to keep moving. We want the smoke to stay clean. And we can control the temperature a little bit by how much wood we add to that fire. Well, we're about four and a half, five hours into this cook now. All of the ribs and the rib tips look fantastic. A lot of these rib tips are ready to come off and the ribs we could also give another spritz. So just kind of by feel here with these rib tips, you can see how much give this has and that'll just tear right apart. That is super tender and ready to snack on. So I'm gonna take all these tips off. We'll move our, uh, our ribs a little more central here to finish them. And then while these are super hot, just one more time, let's hit them with some root beer to kind of tack up, get a little sticky on the surface there. Now these you can either start snacking on now if you want to, or you could throw them into a cooler or a camber or something like that, just to keep them warm while we wait on the ribs to finish. So a lot of these ribs here, they're not too far off. If we try and pick this up from the center, you see how it starts to crack open here a little bit. It's still got a little spring to it. We could take this a little bit further, but come in close here and check out these bones. We can see how this is starting to move a little bit independent of that bone. And that's what we're looking for is we want that to know that that connective tissue is broken down and that it can move freely. So we're getting really close. These are a little bit tighter. maybe just a little bit behind these other ones. So maybe we'll swap these, put them in a little bit warmer spot and let them keep cooking. So we gave these ribs another 30, 45 minutes after we took off our rib tips. And as you can see, if we lift up on this guy, the ends are staying right here on the grate and that top starting to crack open just a little bit, which tells me that these guys are ready to come off. I mean, you can actually see the gap in between the bone and the meat. These are gonna be super tender. This guy's done as well. These two are lagging behind just a little bit, so we'll leave them there. So I'm just gonna give these one last spritz now that they're off. We'll let that residual heat there on the surface just kinda tack that up and let that root beer soak in. Look at that steam coming off of there. That's what we're talking about, how uh, it kind of slows down the cooking process because that liquid has to evaporate off before it continues cooking. Well, there it is. Oh yeah, that fat. You can see the fat, how it's gathered in there. If you squeeze it, it's gonna come out. We're gonna leave it in there though. I give it the old bite test. So that's just about right. If we want this thing to pull off the bone, I think it will. But it's still holding on. It hasn't broken all the way down yet. Man, that's a pretty good rib. I have to say, it's not like with the Dr. Pepper baby back ribs that we did, where we actually reduced the Dr. Pepper down and the Dr. Pepper flavor was super intense. Now with the spritzing, it's more of just a whisper of root beer. I mean, what it's really done is it's created this incredible bark on the surface because every time we spritz, that adds more caramelization to the outside. So the texture is incredible and the color is really amazing. Where the flavor, pretty mild, but we're getting the barbecue rub and we're getting the sweetness from the caramelization on the surface. I think that's about all you need. That's melting down. That's a good rib right there. Now here's some of those rib tips that if you haven't already eaten them all, you could dig them out now, but essentially these things are just gonna shred apart, separate from any cartilage that you might be finding inside. And they're tasty little snack. The really fatty pieces are the best ones where you can actually see like the give as you squish it. Feel free to cube those up and just throw them in a basket on the table.
Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, or if there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below, and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.